but I will say that we have a nice transition because I'm going to open with um, a brief translation from Violeta Parra. Um, so in her song, Me Gustan Los Estudiantes, uh, that was published in 1963-64, Violeta Parra says that the students are, they blow like the wind and that they're the leavening that causes social mobilization and politics to rise. So my project intersects with Violeta Parra and all of these other things that we've been um, thinking about in terms of mobility, mobilization, activism. And I start in 1964 and go through 1990, and these dates will come become obvious momentarily. And my project looks at university student networks and mobilization. So some of the key questions are, how did Chilean students mobilize during this period um, and question the status quo, gain leadership experience, and construct and maintain communication networks with political parties and other social movements to affect social change. So what we're thinking about here is students don't just become mobile in a vacuum, right? They don't just like say, so some people do. Some people say, I want to be an activist. You know, they like get inspired by like one thing. But a lot of people have this like genealogy in their families. They have connections to political parties, all of these types of things. And when I was doing my preliminary dissertation research in 2016, I interviewed people and I worked in some archives and I realized, you know, you see how people are communicating with other people and how their families inspire um, or their, you know, friends or whatever inspire them to like either become active or like to maintain this activism. So building on that, how did they use these connections to political parties and employ the technologies available to them? Um, obviously in the 1960s, there's no cell phones, there's no laptops. You're not communicating in the same way we are today. But people still spread their messages. A lot of times, um, you still see them today, especially over by the Ude Chile, which I passed by the other day, and it's totally painted clean, fresh. They're waiting for graffiti because the students are coming back right now. <laughs> um, but you know, people painted posters, and they like would mass produce those and put them up, and that would spread the message. People had meetings. You could call on the phone, radio programs, all sorts of ways that people stayed in touch with each other. Um, and then how did these networks change during the transition between the two democratically elected presidents, Sofre Montalva, and then also Salvador Allende, and then in the coup d'etat? So not only then, but in the Pinochet period, there's ebbs and flows as well. And then how did students maintain these networks at local, national, and transnational levels? Because these don't just occur you know, on campus at the UDE Chile. And when we're talking about the UDE Chile, prior to uh, 1981, it was all one big system. And so a lot of the campuses were broken off into different universities after or in 1981, okay? So it's important to realize that some of these regional campuses were specifically taken away from the UDE Chile. And then, let's see methodologies, archival documents. Um, I've done work in the Biblioteca Nacional, the Fetch Archive, and I've worked with um, some independent papers that um, some of my interviewees have kept, so personal records. Um, I'm hoping to get to USACH. They have an archive that I was told is in progress, um, and I'm not sure still, I've been trying to figure out if the Pontifica in um, Valparaiso has an archive. Um, oral histories. Last time I was here, I was able to conduct six interviews, and I hope to build on that this time and collect more. It's really important to get out and talk to these people, especially um, because, you know, they know people, they're friends, they're still, these connections that they made when they were students at the Ure Chile or the, at the Catolica in Valparaiso, they're still relevant today. So they still know these people and they say, hey, you know, you're talking to me, talk, you need to get in touch with this, 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 and this person. And it just snowballs from there. So that's a, a method that I am using. Um, analysis and interpretation. So not just listening to their stories, but piecing it together with the archival documents and figuring out 
the bigger picture outside of like official narratives because there's a lot it's not just this hegemonic top-down structure right there's lots of movement and people pushing back along the way and this is really at the heart political history it, it can't not be but it's not just the rote you know big man history we're not just talking about Pinochet and focusing on him we're talking about you know the people and how they are affected and affect change so location Santiago these are just a few institutions and I'm just gonna try and focus on some some of the larger institutions because otherwise I think it would get a little overwhelming of course I would love to do a bigger project, but I think that's in the future. Um, so Universidad de Chile, the Pontificia, and USACH, and Valparaiso, the Católica también, and then Concepción, Universidad de Concepción. I have also not been here um, yet. This is one of the places I've not visited. Um, so I'm hoping to get in touch with a few people that I know that are from that area. Um, one of my professors from undergrad actually uh, is from Concepción. So. I think he has connections there. Um, my affiliation here is with the Universidad de Chile, and I'm actually working with a sociologist. His name is Oscar Aguilar, and um, his project is actually the, this kind of, I'm associated with this project. Um, it's called Juventudes, and it's a Conicet funded project. Um, they're basically building an archive of digital, it's a digitized archi ar archive of photography from the 1900s, um, basically turn of the 20th century through the late 1970s. And the project is basically digitizing these photographs of youth activists or just youths in general. Um, so I'll be able to pull some of those uh, photos for my project as well. And um, we'll be working to conduct interviews that go along with that project. Um, Besides that, University of Arizona, Universidad de Chile, any student activists or people that are even just interested in politics, you know, this project isn't just focused on these people and their daily lives, but it's also a representation of broader um, international political moments. So for example, in the 1960s, there's the Alliance for Progress that the U.S. creates, and um, when Frey Montalva is elected, he receives a lot of money from the U.S. government for education, and there's this boom in education, and people, for the first time, it's not just thousands of people that are allowed to go to university, but tens of thousands of people. So there's a ch drastic change in the cost of university education and the availability of it. And that happens because there's outside money coming in, but then there's also influence and certain expectations on the part of the US. So that also is kind of playing into some of the things that I'm looking at, because it's not just what Chileans want, it's also, you know, when you have partnerships with other countries, how, how there's like push and pull there and the power that happens. Um, because there's also, you know, cultural exchange there's um, study abroad, all sorts of things like that that take place that affect people and the networks that they build. And then my goals for this year, um, finish conducting my archival research. I feel like I have a pretty good foothold there, but I definitely want to follow up with some of the archives I visited last time, and then there's a couple of new ones that I would like to go to. Um, I would at least like to conduct 15 to 20 more oral histories because I think that that helps weave in not only personal narratives, but um, it kind of helps complete the bigger picture a little bit because you're getting not just the official story, but you know how people are perceiving changes that are happening. Drafting chapters, this is, I hope, something that I can really focus and get done. Um, and then I'm really hoping to present research at Talleres and conferences, not only here, but in the US when I get back. I have already applied for the American Historical Association in January, and they don't notify until later this year. Um, impact. So increased understanding of the relationship between personal networks. Um, that includes all of these things listed here and many more. 
and how they may drive or continue to encourage university students to mobilize. So this isn't something that's just happened in the past and it no longer matters. I mean, these people who were activists in the 1980s while they were students are now president of the country. Um, they were former presidents of the country. And there are grandparents that are now marching in the streets with their grandchildren, not only for university education changes, because the university and education system is still that of the 1980 Constitution, but also retirement. So there's these things that go together, and that helps people connect to each other. Um, to continue to historicize the relationship between education and politics, Again, this isn't something that just happens at the local level or the national level. It's an international level thing. I just used the U.S. as one example, but there's also evidence of Chilean students interacting with um, international groups in Europe and also regionally with students in Argentina and Brazil. And also to increase the attention on the importance of youth politics in Chile, because at the heart of the matter, this actually is very important to Chile as a culture because politics here are such a huge part of daily life. And that's it. Yes. Um, how are you defining activism and are you tracing, are you doing anything issue specific? Or are you thinking more generally? So for right now, um, I'm looking, the main focus that I'm trying to keep at the heart of it is um, politics, right? So whether that be on campus and looking at demands for, you know, tuition changes or wanting to be able to pick professors on campus, um, whether that be nationally saying, you know, you can't send police onto campus, this is our campus, or, you know, we need more funding collectively as schools. Um, what was the other part of your question? Um, how you were defending activism and if there were any specific issues you were Ah, uh, yes. Um, and then activism, you know, it depends on the situation, but I think that the focus here um, with education and politics, if there's, if it moves a little, you know, and how it, but the main focus would be the connection there. I have some archives idea for you too, so let's Yeah, I'd love to <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Uh, speaking of this sort of, part of my question is, um, yeah, you mentioned all these different like libraries and like archives, I guess I'm wondering, um, what are the types of like documents or resources? And you also mentioned, um, I guess, you know, mem memoirs or you know, items from folks that you're doing oral histories with. So I guess I'm wondering, what are the specific types of archives that you're looking through? Great question. Um, so the archival material can range from anything from meeting memoranda to photographs, um, video or sound recordings, um, papers. So like you know, any sort of newspaper articles, um, organization documents or manifestos. There's also lots of um, copies of the little like posters that they would make. Um, in the personal collections, it's newspaper clippings. So people, um, for one a person that I interviewed, he was the president of an organization in Valparaiso, and he got kicked out of school for a semester, and so one of the pictures he had was him, you know, being let out, you know, by the police. Mm -hmm. um, but he also had, um, you know, just letters, things like that. So it really <clears throat> lets you in. You get this like entree into people's personal lives, but also their relationships on campus. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Questions? Great. Uh, just to let you know. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, I was going to clap again. Oh. <laughs> 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 Up next is Amy Campos. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and Danielle, I think there's some contacts at the back of the day. So